Hello, we are the Salon Sleuths. My name is Melissa. And my name is Leslie. And we are two women from the Pacific Northwest. We are both curious about paranormals, spirit guides, ghosts, past lives. We are suspicious about true crime, disappearances, and strange phenomenons. We are open to learning about the supernatural and all things we don't understand. Together, we're opinionated with a splash of smartass. Join us to learn. And stay curious, stay suspicious, and stay open. Follow Salon Sluice on all major podcast platforms. Well, good morning, Leslie. How are you? I'm great. How about you, Melissa? <sighs> I'm kind of funky this week. Uh-oh. I'm really pissed off about Texas. And I know yeah. you don't do the news. I do see you- your posts. Are you listening at all? Are you paying attention to what's going on in our world at all? I, I do um, a little bit and I know what's happening in Texas and I hear and I see what people are posting and yeah, no, I, I mean, I agree with you in your post. So I'm just not super political and I, I know I don't want to. Um, get into fights with people about it. I just want everybody to be happy and I want everybody, but I suppose if there aren't people out there fighting for these rights, then correct people would just keep taking advantage of certain groups and that would continue. But um, so share with us. Well, so do you feel like, so I know you're not political. So I guess, do you feel like, the woman is being targeted at all. I just don't think it's fair. It's not right. Like, I think we should all be able to make those choices for ourselves and for the government to make those for us because it's, it's going to happen anyway. So if they have to go elsewhere or to do it where it's not safe, right? Right. So we're talking about the abortion law and Texas has just recently signed Senate eight bill, which basically, um, for those of you that are living under a rock and do not know about this, they're basically saying no abortions are allowed after six weeks. And this went into effect this last Wednesday, but I decided to calm myself down and do some research on this. Okay. Do I have my facts correct? You know, what does all of this mean? And firstly, let's discuss the straight up six weeks. Because the six weeks is kind of uh, not true. Um, The six weeks starts from the first day of your last period. So let's just break that down. For those of you men listening um, that don't know, the first day of your last period, you're not pregnant. So although we discuss that in terms of, you know, pregnancy cycle, you're actually not pregnant until then. You're, I mean, you're not pregnant on the first day of your period. You're actually not pregnant really physically until after your period is over. Right. Like 10 days after, right? Correct. Correct. Right. So, so we're looking at two weeks past your first day of your last period. Correct. And, and people can get pregnant different at different periods within there because for example, uh, I have a five week period. So if you say that, um, I cannot have an abortion six weeks into my pregnancy cycle. That would be literally a week after I should have had my period. Right. Because they're counting from the day of your last period, Correct. not when you were actually conceived. Correct. So what, are, what they're probably saying is if you're raped or you're any of that, you should take the morning after pill. Is that what they're saying? They're not saying anything about that, Leslie. In fact, you know, that's been a lot of the controversy is the governor. He's kind of an idiot. He came out and said, no, no, you know, I'm not saying that rape and incest um, victims cannot get an abortion. Well, yeah, you are, because most of us don't even know that we've missed a period or it's not unlikely for us to miss a period by one or two weeks. Like that's not abnormal. I I am not a regular person when I am regular, it's every five weeks, but a good majority of us, four weeks is just like 28 days, which is what they say is a normal period or normal cycle is really kind of a, 
misnomer. It's most people are not a straight up 28 days unless you're taking some control, like a birth control pill where you're taking it for 28 days. And then you take this, the green pill, which is nothing for seven days. And so you kind of do that, but a lot of people are very irregular. So I just got madder and madder as I started doing this. Cause I literally was like, this just makes me so pissed off. Um, so the, the ban is on abortion after cardiac activity is detected. There are no exceptions for rape or incest. It does permit abortions for health reasons, but they're very, very narrow. The health reasons are if it endangers the mother's life or her having the baby would lead to substantial or irreversible impairment of major bodily functions. And you can imagine, Leslie, that if your doctor said, hey, you know, you having this baby will lead to major bodily function. There's going to be a lawsuit about that. Like you're going to have to go through legal channels to, to challenge this, right? Like this is not going to be an easy thing. And the other thing that the Texas law does that I think is super dangerous is it, um, they called it deputize, deputizes citizens. So Leslie, this would be the scenario, not that you would ever do this, but if you heard that your friend or your friend's friend or whatever was going to have an abortion, you would sue her and you would say, you are having an abortion. And I'm also going to sue, um, my friend, because I know she's watching your kids for you while you go. And the Lyft driver that drove you there and drove you back home, I'm going to sue him too, because for each person that you sue and you win, you will get $10,000. So there's incentive for people now that want to make a quick buck to turn these people in. Now, if you win the suit, you not only get all your legal fees back, but you also get the $10,000. However, if you lose, who's paying the $10,000? The state. Okay. The state will pay you. It's like a reward. Um, But if you lose, you also get your, your, um, your litigation, your court costs paid for, but the um, person that you bring the charges against the defendant, I guess you would call them. They do not, if you lose, get their court costs covered. So this thing just seems like a frigging hot mess to me. I do not understand it. Um, the, basically the people suing need to have no connection to the patient or the clinic. Um, and as I said, they will receive a $10,000 reward and recover their legal fees. Um, now when I was looking into this, what if they go to another state and come back, do they get in trouble because they went somewhere else? I do not believe that is correct. I think that you are free now you're free to go to another state. The problem with that, Leslie, is that you and I know that people of disadvantage, lower income, um, those of color, those of immigration immigrants, they can't typically afford to go to other states. And what I found in researching this was that Georgia, Mississippi, Kentucky, and Ohio also have heartbeat laws. Banning abortion after cardiac activity can be detected on an ultrasound. Um, and it's when estimated, did that come into play? Well, just in the last few years when we're not all paying attention. Um, I don't, I don't know. I didn't look that up, but um, there's a c- couple different ways that I want to take this, but I'm going to give you some stats first. First of all, 85% of abortions are done after the first six weeks. Because as you and I know, especially with myself, a five week period, I don't know, I wouldn't know that I've missed a period for at least six weeks, right? And then as we all know, I mean, we've all had some knowledge of people. I fortunately never had to have an abortion. I did have a miscarriage, but I didn't have an abortion. Um, That's a very hard decision. One in which there is no right answer. As a woman, if you decide to abort a fetus, that is a decision that will live with you and more than, more than not haunt you for the rest of your life. If you decide to, to have the child to, to keep the pregnancy that also 
will change your life forever, right? Even if you give the child up for adoption, because there's a whole lot of things that go with that, with, with, uh, adoption too. And, you know, I hear these people saying all the time, well, just, you know, give the baby up for adoption. It still has a huge impact on your life. It still is something that you will never get over. Um, you will, it, you're always connected to that. And I think as a woman, I'm not sure men understand that it is not like a stuffed animal. I don't just, think they can understand that. And it's yeah. not um, fair to even try to it, like, it's just, it, they're not going to. Yeah. Not However, the do. they're the ones making these laws. Right. Um, now they're not alone. There are women that are voting for them too. And there are women fully on their side, but um, you know, the majority of lawmakers that are doing these things are men. So I'm pointing the figure at all men who support or don't support us women and our bodies that men need to stand up. We need help. There are 7 million women in the state of Texas of child bearing age, 7 million. Oh my gosh. 70% of abortions in 2019 in Texas were of women in, of color, according to the Guttmacher, Guttmacher Institute. Um, so I was kind of surprised by that. 70% are women of color and Texas already requires minors to have permission from a parent or guardian, which oftentimes requires them to go to court, which I didn't realize either either. So that also would, would push them out beyond the six week point. If you had to go to court to get approval, to get this set abortion or whatever, um, and Texas Governor Greg Abbott, as I said, idiot, um, he falsely claimed that victims of rape or incest are not exception are exceptions, which is not true. But then he goes on to say when he's corrected and told, you know, told that he's basically wrong, he goes on to say that Texas will work tirelessly to eliminate all rapes and rapists. Are okay, wait, kidding? I'm just curious, like. Okay, so they have this bill. What are they trying to do with it? Like, are they trying to not have as many pregnancies or are they trying to, because no, like, they're what trying you to not have abortions. They're, pr they're you pro life. They're trying to promote more like birth control and those no. sorts of an awareness. They don't believe or in birth control. Or they just do this. No, no, they don't believe in, they don't want birth control either. They want more babies born, but they don't want to take care of said babies. So that 70% of abortions of women of color, they're not going to take care of your baby. If you have that baby, they just want that baby born because they're pro-life. They don't believe babies should be in their words. They're going to say the baby's murdered. I, I take a little bit of, of, of issue with that in my own personal beliefs that having a baby is a big decision. It's a, it is. And I think they burden. need to hold the father more accountable if that's going to be agree. the case. Like, thank you. And if the father's not able to, the state needs to do it if they're not willing to give the woman options. Correct. Correct. I agree. So, um, as I said, the countdown to the six weeks is actually the first day of a person's last period, which Governor Abbott seems to not understand. He clearly needs to be explained a woman. So, you're body. really just two weeks pregnant. It's two weeks, sister. You've got Maybe, two weeks yeah. to figure it out. And I don't know about you, Leslie, but I cannot imagine making that decision in two weeks time. I, 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 first of all, I would probably spend one week thinking it's my five, you know, my weird, irregular pig period maybe, maybe even more. Some, some people don't even know they're pregnant. Right. I mean, we've, we've all had these people. I didn't know I was pregnant with my second until I think I was 10 weeks because I just had a baby six months earlier. I mean, there was a whole lot of things. So you don't have a regular period. So once even, you know, that's another subject that after you have a child, you don't necessarily have regular periods. So you're kind of like at the mercy of, well, I don't really know. Well, I turned out I was pregnant mm -hmm. and I had only had one period before that. So I didn't think I was pregnant. I had no reason to believe I was pregnant. I just thought, oh, my periods aren't regular. This is normal, you know, whatever. I was blessed to be in a situation where I was in a married situation. We had the money to afford a second child. Um, I was shocked. I certainly was shocked that I was pregnant. It wasn't what I had planned, 
you know, which that's a whole nother story and topic of, you know, your plan. There is no yeah. plan. Right. Um, but I just, I just find this whole thing to be absolutely just makes me so mad. Just <laughs> makes me so mad. So I started going down the rabbit hole of, you know, what does this do? Who, who supports this? And, oh my gosh, the first thing that pops up is Caitlyn Jenner. Mm -hmm. Now, you know who Caitlyn Jenner is, right? Yeah. He was a man. He was a man. He's now a woman. He's running for governor of, of California and he's a Republican and he gets on there. And this is a man, by the way, or had been a man that has become a woman. Who can't so, have children, by the way. Who can't have children. Exactly. Doesn't have the doesn't have the equipment. And he had the right to become with his male body a woman, right? He says he is pro-life. Or sorry, he's pro-choice. So he she. believes in a woman. She, sorry. She is pro-choice, but she believes in and supports Texas right to make their own laws. Are you flipping kidding me? So I wouldn't put it past Texas to say you cannot convert from man to woman. You can't be transgender like this. Do you think it's like like a religious thing in Texas? Because there seems to be a lot of the Bible belt belt and all that going through there. It's more of a religious. It's very religious. Yeah. I think it's more of a religious decision to go through and do this. You mean to not have an abortion? Yeah. Like, are they, is it, is that what's, I'm just trying to figure out what's caused like all of this really. Well, so have you seen reversing row? Cause this is what I want to want to point out. So I saw reversing row. I think it was at the beginning of COVID or right before there. And it was really eye opening. I want to encourage everyone out there listening to male or female to watch it. I mean, I implore you Is it a movie? What is it? Yes. It's a documentary. I think it's on Netflix. Um, I want to implore everyone to pay attention to this because what reversing row did for me is it showed me this was a long play. So Roe v. Wade, I think was 40 years ago. If I have my math correct, I didn't look that up for this, but I think it's a 40 year old um, Supreme court decision. And so for 40 years, we've had the right to an abortion, to a legal abortion in this country. And what I learned in this documentary is that since that happened, there has been a long play of politicians, conservative politicians that believe in pro-life, changing things in our states to make it harder and harder to, for women to get an abortion. So in, I believe it's Missouri, if you watch the documentary, they have made it so difficult by the laws of who can give a legal abortion. You have to be within certain, um, a certain distance to a hospital, um, thereby making a state like Missouri, who's extremely rural, has a lot of rural counties, unable to give a legal abortion to um, a woman because they're not, they're physically not close enough to this size of hospital that is required. And so you have places in Missouri that you would have to travel six hours or go across state lines to get a legal abortion, which I just do not believe is okay. And is, is okay. You know, is, is cool. I mean, I, I think that you are at that point saying somebody of lesser means that can't afford to travel six hours, doesn't have somebody who can drive them six hours, little on a car that six hours, you can't drive home after an abortion. They can't stay in a hotel. They don't have money for a hotel. You're basically saying you're not getting an abortion. So it's been a slow play for pro-lifers to make it more and more impossible. And this particular law, and I'm not going to go down the rabbit holes of what this all can eventually lead to, but it eventually can lead to um, Roe v. Wade being overturned. That is bottom line where they're going with this. That's their play. And I implore everyone to start paying attention to this and, um, you know, looking at this. So then I, my, my next question was Leslie. Okay. So I can't think of a single thing on a man 
that medically we control that there's laws against. Do you, do you know of anything that we say men are can or cannot do medically? Mm -mm. No. So a woman, you know, we have rules about when we can get an abortion, what we can do to our body, obviously. In fact, some hospitals, um, some healthcare places will even say you can't, we're not going to pay for your birth control under your medical coverage. We're not going to uh, tie your tubes. You know, yeah, that's yeah. definitely right, Catholic right. hospitals will say, we won't, you know, tie any woman's tubes if she's done having kids and doesn't want to have kids anymore. Um, I know my son's school, university of Portland, they're very Catholic. They refuse to pay for birth control in their, um, healthcare, um, that was provided by the school. And luckily that, company that they had hired to do their healthcare said, no, 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 we're still going to provide this, um, which I applaud them. And I say, oh, are you kidding me? Then make birth control over the counter like condoms are like, why do I need a prescription for the birth control? A man doesn't need a prescription for the, for the condom, like right. or spermicide or whatever else. So I, I get a little tied up in women's rights here, as you can tell. So I did look at it, but I, I feel like the, the, find... the pill does mess with our home hormones. So I don't yeah. know if it's something you should no. like do over the counter. It needs to be done by a doctor, but it should be paid for. I agree. I Especially agree. if they don't let you have abortions. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, so then I kind of went down the rabbit hole of, you know, what kinds of things are controlled in men. And in 2014, Julianne Ross from Mike.com said that in the year of 2014, and she was writing this in June, she said there had been 468 restrictive um, laws not put into effect, but, um, attempted to restrict women's reproductive rights, 468. And that's in six months time, the same period of legislation that would restrict men's rights on their bodies was zero. So six months, 468 for women, zero for men. So then I started digging a little bit more and I did find, um, someone that said, Hey, wait, we talk about the control of women's bodies. What about the military in controlling men's bodies? We require men since 1973, we've required men to register for the military. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm hearing him. So, um, and if you do not, it's punishable by five years of prison or a $250,000 um, fee. However, and this is men 18 to 25. So small pocket of women or sorry, of men for women, we have a baby making zone of what, I mean, some women, it's really, really early 10 to 13, right. To probably 40, 45. I mean, I know women that get pregnant in their forties. So we have a much bigger right, window. Right. It's not 18 to 25. And um, also we haven't done a draft in years, decades, I should say. Um, so men comparing the military, and I agree, I, I will fully agree that when you go into the military, they have control of your body. I fully agree with that. I would not disagree with that. Um, however, we have not done the draft uh, in a lot of years. So the fact that we, we are not controlling all of men's bodies without their consent. They have actually consented to go into the military. They chose to go into the military. And yes, the military has control of their body. I don't think that they're telling these men they can't have babies. I don't think that they are castrating them until they get out of the military, um, which would be the really the only comparable thing. Um, and you know, me being a smart ass, I saw somewhere on social media that said, Hey, uh, you know, men having, um, a vasectomy is reversible. So how about we just give all vasectomies to boys that can make babies and then we just reverse it when, yes. when they want to have babies then we just reverse it, that would stop our, you know, women getting pregnant. 
unwanted pregnancies, right? And I thought, hmm, nobody ever talks about that stuff. It's always about women, women, women. And yet you have these restrictive laws about getting birth control, um, you know, where women can get birth control, how they can get birth control. They have to have a parent's permission slip to get birth control. I just find this whole thing rotten to the core. And I'm so fired up about it, Leslie, that I could just spit. And I just, I, I, I also looked up what women in Texas are doing about this. Yeah. What are they doing? Nothing. Okay. There's, there's women obviously that are protesting that are part of, uh, the pro-choice sort of planned parenthood, but that's all I could find is these kind of planned parenthood, um, groups, you know, protesting. I can't find anything of the common woman, like just being outraged. I mean, I look here at Portland and everybody made fun of us, but there were moms and, you know, just regular old people going down to black lives matter to protest that when Trump, you know, went into office, we had, you know, all these women for women's rights down on the waterfront, normal everyday people saying, this is not okay. We are not okay with us. And I don't hear anything going on in Texas. Nothing, no, no big protesting, nothing. Are women just laying down for this? Or do they all believe the same thing in Texas? Or is it just all the other states around them that is upset by it? That's a great question. That's, that's a question I have too. Like, what is going on? Is this really, do you really want to be controlled like this? Or have you watched Handmaid's Tale? Oh yeah. Okay. I love that show. Like this, this is shit that would happen in that show. Yeah. This is how this shit starts. You guys, you know, taking away your rights to your body and what you choose to do with it. That's just the beginning of taking away all of your rights. And I hate to sound so dramatic. It's not dramatic. This has been a long play in pro-life politicians for 40 years. We need to wake up and pay attention. We need to be teaching our daughters because if they're not paying attention when we're gone, who's going to carry this? You know, I, I, I just, I'm just so fired up, Leslie. So that's it's getting my heart rate up. I've been fired up for probably what a week and a half, two weeks. I'm so glad you don't live in Texas. Oh my God. Okay. So I do have a friend who moved from Portland. She moved to Texas, but after a few States. And I did talk to a friend of hers, to, of our mutual friend yesterday. And I said, how's she doing? And she said, oh, she said she's, she's leaving. She can't, she can't do this. And I'm like, okay. Specifically but for that or for other things? Yes. No, specifically for that, specifically for that. She's like, I can't raise my kids here. This is just not okay. And then some no. people can't afford to leave. Some people are just. Yeah, correct. I mean, she can, she can make that work. You know, her husband yeah. can get a different job. She can get a different job, whatever. And she really, I think likes Texas in terms of, you know, she's in San Antonio, which is one of the liberal locations, but I kind of agree. Like what message is that sending to your kids? And she has boys. Um, so obviously they won't be impacted, but I just, I can't imagine Leslie. I just, I, I, I think we've been all sleeping. That's, that's kind of what I think. So well, I think there should be some, something with the man involved with this, you know, it shouldn't just be all right. the woman's right. Problem problem. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. How do we hold men accountable for that? Right. We can't get pregnant on our own. No, no. And in fact, like it takes the man in order to get pregnant. Exactly. So but it's our, exactly. it's our fault. It's, we yes. have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is how I feel about like drunk driving or any of those things. Like it affects other people, even though like it was a result of somebody else. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, you know, I mean, I hate to just bring it back to COVID, but it's kind of the thing with COVID too. You know, it, the same people in Texas are saying, it's my choice to get a vaccine. It's my choice. Really? When it affects other people. Yeah. I mean, I totally agree with you, but when you're affecting the hospital system, the nurses, the elderly, you know, other people, 
it's affecting? And how can you say you have the choice to get an abortion, sorry, <laughs> to, to wear a mask or to get a vaccine, but yet, oh, but we're going to take away women's rights to get an abortion. Like that to me, I, I can't even fathom, like at least stay on the same side of the road. If like, you're where they even, like, there are such bigger things to be dealing with right now. Why did they choose that one? Why now? Well, I think the climate was right. I don't, I don't know the back end of that. I know that the last four years of the Trump era, he was stacking the Supreme Court for this very purpose. There, as I said, if you listen to and watch Roe v. Wade or reversing Roe, sorry, um, you will see this has been a long, long play. And when everybody was upset and Leslie, because you don't follow uh, politics very much, you might've been like, why is everybody pissed off about Brett Kavanaugh and Amy? What was her name? What is her name? The other uh, Supreme court justice that was put on the court by Trump. Um, You may have been like, ah, you know, is it a big deal or whatever? Yeah. It's a big deal because of this play. It's all about abortion. And I think part of the plan, it was, it was all part of the plan. It was all part of the plan to stack the court, to get abortion. Like that's the big focus. And I, I don't understand why politicians, i.e. evangelical churches are so focused on this one issue um, and not like not focused on issues of um, civil rights or rights of how we take care of people, how we take care of care of elderly. Like, I don't get that. Like, wow. They're just that's... making birth control easier to get, right. make it right. free, make it whatever, right. put yeah. a focus on that versus the aftermath of what happens. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so know. yeah, there you go. That's my, my rant. Oh, today. I know dang. it's heavy shit, man. It's heavy shit. I know. Yeah. I'm I do sorry. have a lighter one. Okay, tell me a light move on to that one. This. Well, okay, I shouldn't say it's light, but it's lighter than that because I'm not going to get as fired up <laughs> about it. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie's probably like, "Oh my god, I had no idea." It just stresses me out. Right? Yeah, it stresses me out. Okay, does it stress you out to hear the information or that my stress level goes up? Um, I think it's both, and then the the fact that. I only like to (laughs) learn. Well, I I say this, but like, like if I can't control or do anything about it, it actually just makes me even more stressed out. And I think that's why I don't follow politics because there's not really much I can do about it. And so it's hard to hear when, um, when it's out of my control. So my, somebody else I know always says, well, there's nothing I can do about it. There actually is (laughs) something we can do about it, Leslie. And educating I yourself that was coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> educating yourself is the first thing and be not being silent about it. Yes. There's, there's the things we can get into politics and we can do all these things. I'm not going to do that. Leslie either. I am going to shoot my big blabber mouth off over fish, uh, over social media. I am going to do that. I'm going to put my big blabber mouth off over this podcast because I can. Um, but if we are silent and we are n- not voting. We need to vote. Every woman needs to vote. Um, we need to vote with our conscience as well as our sexuality, like who we are, our bodies. We need to protect those. And we need to research when we are voting. What is this person for? What do, do they align with our values? How, mm-hmm. What's the end game? Who supports this bill that I'm thinking about supporting? Like, you know, reading those in favors and disfavor, I think it's disfavor. They make it so confusing. I think on purpose too. Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, sometimes Leslie, this is my, this is my little hint. I go to who disagrees with it or who uh, um, necessarily not necessarily agrees with it, but disagrees with it. And I look at who they are. Do I align with those people? Okay. What are these groups? What is this freedom Oregon group? Oh, these are friggin' wackadoos. Like, I don't agree with them, you know? So I, I do think there are things we can do and we need to educate our girls. That's, that's my other thing is, you know, um, my daughter gets probably sick of hearing me rant, but now she is in college and she's learning about more of these women's rights issues and she's starting to rant a little. So I, because this ultimately affects her and her future. Exactly. I'm not going to have an abortion. You guys like I'm done. I'm not, (laughs) I'm not 
the, no equipment there. Like that's not going to happen for me. So me getting so fired up about this is not for my personal self. It is for, for your kids. It's for it your grandkids. It's correct. for yeah. their generations to come. Yeah. Yeah. So that just, it just gets me fired up. So there are things we can do. They don't seem maybe like they're as impactful. And I understand that because I have felt that before too, but I also now see, um, how just not being quiet about those things, not being okay with those things, making sure that people know about these things. So let me just ask you this. Is is this more about abortion or is it more about them controlling our bodies? I think it is about, Ooh, good question. I think it's about abortion. I really do. Um, I think it should be more about our rights as a, as a woman. Exactly. That's what make those decisions. And it doesn't matter if it's to have a hysterectomy, even though we don't need one, or if it's whatever we decide or to get your, be more about controlling our own bodies and what we decide to do with that. Correct. Not necessarily just about abortion. I think it has to be about, because once you, so if they do that, they may reward it to something else and change it instead of just doing women's rights and what, in our own bodies, it should be more for that. I would think. To your point, Caitlyn Jenner, that's why I'm so shocked. Wait, you have the right to change from a man to a woman, but a woman doesn't have a right to choose whether they're going to carry a child for nine months. And if they give that child up, so let's just say they don't have the money to afford that child. They give that child up. They know that child is walking around somewhere. They know that child is thinking, my mom didn't want me. They know their whole life. They may get a knock on the door eventually and say, hey, I'm your your child and I'm pissed off that you didn't have me, didn't keep me, or I was you know, tortured and, and abused my whole life. And how could you do that to me? Like, it doesn't end when you have the child. So many men I hear saying that, well, give the child up for adoption. It doesn't end. Well, because they can just walk away. They do. And they do yes. a lot. Like, yes. and, uh, yeah. And they don't support them. I mean, no. not they, I, I mean, I'm generalizing everybody yes. and that is not fair, but there are, they can, they have the ability and it often happens if they choose to not support that child financially, that they can do that. Well, and it seems like in that case, the state should automatically pay a certain amount and then it's up to them to go after the men. But regardless, that woman is getting that same amount each month That's from the state. That's a great idea. But it's, they have, it's kind of like when you get in a car accident, like yes. your insurance pays for it and they go after the other insurance company. That's so if you're required idea. to not have a baby, to have this baby, the state then guarantees you will get $2,000 a month for this child. Yeah. For 18 years. Yes. And then it's up to you to go after that father for that amount of money. Well, that's the thing that I has never made sense to me because Texas also their, their, their culture is so conservative that they're not going to pay a single dime for somebody that's not in their house. Right. And they're not about social services. They're not about helping the poor. Um, and so wait, you're forcing these people and 70% are of color. So you're forcing these people to have babies, but yet you're not going to help take care of those babies. So who's going to pay for those babies? Who's going to pay for those kids until they can support themselves? Well, and even going before all of that is education and free services to people who may get pregnant, like right, free birth control, like right. Just if you have to go to Planned Parenthood to get on the pill to see a doctor, yeah. that should all be covered by the state. If Correct. you're not, if you're not going, if you're going to go through this bill, like make Correct. it available anonymously. If a, you know, a 15 year old girl wants to start having sex, she should be able to go to a clinic, Correct. which the state will then pay for. Right. I mean, I think, I mean, I don't know. It's I don't just know all kinds of wrong. See, this is why I don't like to think about stuff like this. Cause no, that makes me like anxious. And I know, I know it feels, I, I too feel like it's out of my control, but I can't stop talking about it and worrying about it because I have to keep my eye on the ball. And I think a lot yeah. of people, unfortunately, and I was one of these that made voting decisions, sometimes not with all the information. 
and you don't know what the backstory is. You don't know what the real incentive is for somebody to be putting this bill out there and come to find out, you know, they've been planning this abortion takeover for 40 years. Like, dude, we were sleeping. We were sleeping. No one was paying attention. I wasn't paying attention. Exactly. Me neither. And it was just like one step closer every time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that is a, the exact message that I got in, in watching reversing row was, Oh, okay. I see how just incremental changes tick, tick, tick. They've just been ticking away. And this is a huge tick, huge. Yeah. Tick. This can have a huge impact on Roe v. Wade as a nation, as a nation. So Well, so here's an, here's my other story. And this one is kind of good news, bad news. This one is about a cold case that was solved after many, many years. And that is using new DNA technology and, um, you know, that we didn't have in the seventies. So this story comes from the Statesman journal, which is Salem. So our state's capital and Whitney Woodworth, she uh, authored this piece. But in 1979, Janie Landers, who was a patient at Fairview Training Center, which I didn't know about Fairview Training Center, I'll talk about that in a minute, on March 9th. So Fairview Training Center was kind of an inpatient um, facility for people with diminished uh, mental capacity. And they would live there and they would teach them how to live life, get a job, do normal things, have them on a schedule, that kind of thing. So they could come and go, but this was basically, um, you know, a facility for the mentally um, challenged. Right. And on March 9th, 1979, a girl named Janie, did I already, I already said that, but did I call her Janie? I feel like I didn't I don't think so. Her. Okay. Janie Landers. She went missing and her mental capacity was that of an eight, eight year old. She had learning and behavioral challenges and um, she lived full time at the residence um, facility or residency facility. And four employees had claimed to be the last to see her. And they said that they saw a yellow or gold vehicle with a pot bellied man is what they called him, which I actually thought was funny. And that's a whole nother conversation calling people pot bellied man. I don't hear that much anymore. Like, yeah. Do people call people that pot bellied? I don't know. Um, they saw, saw him, a pot bellied man parked in his car and he had talked to her across the street. Um, they did make some sketches of the man, but five days later, her body was found in silver Creek falls. Now we've talked about silver Creek falls. I think you've been there, correct? Yes. Okay. For our listeners, it's an amazing state park. It has, I think eight falls in it too, like a North and a South that are really big and then various little falls. And you can just hike in there till your heart's content. It's so gorgeous. So pretty, but it's about, I'd say 30 minutes from Salem. So it's not very far. We go there and we camp. There's a campground there too. Um, but the autopsy revealed that she had died of blunt force trauma to the head. She had multiple, um, defensive wounds and deep cuts to her neck. So they figured out that she really did fight for her life. But ultimately, he was a or the, this person was able to overtake her and her sister was her younger sister at the time. And she actually never gave up on finding her sister's murder. She kept calling the police station um, every few years. And um, when this story broke in 2016, uh, she was actually 50 years old by this point. So that just tells you how little she was. Um And in 2015, she actually got the Oregon State Police to reinvestigate the case. And they found that one of her shirts had some male DNA on it. So they actually tested it. And the lab confirmed that it was male DNA and it belonged to Gerald Kenneth Dunlap. 
And the reason they were able to figure out it was Dunlap is because he had a criminal past. Don't 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 don't. He had um, moved to Oregon in the way of California before that from Tennessee, where in Tennessee, he was charged for armed robbery and rape and spent 12 years in prison. When he got out, he went to California where he had to register as a sex offender. And so he left California and moved to Oregon, which did not have that law at the time. And so he was employed at the Fairview facility where she was staying and he was in the laundry department. And so this crime happened in 1979. He was actually there until 1983. So another four years after that, and he was fired for inappropriate behavior towards women. And in 1996, Dunlap was found guilty of sexually abusing a minor female family member. So he continued to do this. This was not a one-off for him. He'd done it in the past. He continued to do it. He actually died in 2002. And investigators, um, even after learning that this was his DNA on the shirt, they worked really hard to make sure, A, that it was not transfer DNA. Since he did work at the facility, they wanted to make sure that he wouldn't have had his DNA on any laundered clothes of hers. Um, And then also they interviewed a bunch of employees that they could get their hands on and look through files. They did um, confirm former employees said that they would um, that he would often leave work early and he'd loiter around the bus stop near Fairview's um, location and offering patients rides. So he did that. A couple of the employees, I believe all four, quite frankly, um, if I recall, I did not write that down, but they were able to pull him in a lineup with his picture with other people that would look similar to him, but they were able, not a hundred percent sure, but they all picked him as their first choice out of those lineups. So that I think also says a lot about him, um, and being the one his, um, family also confirmed that he did have a car like that and that he often liked to hike at silver Creek falls. Um, he was also confirmed to be working that day. So they are really, really sure that he is the correct killer, even though he has passed away and will not get his justice for it. Um, but the family feels really good. The dad is like 82 now. And like I said, the daughter, um, or the sister is 50 and they were actually able to finally give her earrings back and a little necklace that she was wearing. And so that really meant a lot to the family. And I just applaud the investigator who just did his due diligence and really worked to, you know, solve the case that, yeah a lot of people would have just been like, ah, oh, there's, there's nothing we can do here. You know, it's a cold case. So, it's an old why bother. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it meant so much to the family. And I think it's a tribute to the sister who just kept trying to get it reopened. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's my sad, not so sad, not so frustrating story, <laughs> there is. which death is always sad and all of that. I'm, I'm just, I'm happy that there's more testing that we can do to find some of these people and yeah. solve some of these crimes. Good Lord, Melissa. Right? That's I know a lot of heavy, heavy stuff today. I know. Well, um, I just want to let you know that I did drop an episode today called Freaky Friday with Magenta. Oh. This is the psychic lady that reached out through our YouTube page. Yes. And um, it's just the reading It's just what she had talked about on um, with I had Karen on with us uh-huh. or with me. And then so it's just her telling. Well, she wanted she was calling to tell us some ghost stories, but because she's psychic, I'm like, I'm going to ask her about a couple of other cases. <laughs> and she's like, well, I'm not really ready. But then she just kept talking about it. Yeah. And without saying she didn't want to know the name of the cases. So I don't know. She's either really good. Or she read up on this stuff because it was so accurate, right? And she's from the UK. She didn't want us to say where she lived. I think she worries about um, scary people or whatever. And I think they're, 
Yeah, internet trolls. And I think their laws are different in the UK with what they can talk about. So she didn't want to get in trouble. But she did give us the okay to say she works at Psychic Sofa, which is there in the UK, you call into these facilities to these lines, right? Here in the US people like poo poo them. Yeah. Um. so can you ask for there. her specifically? Like if I called and said, yes, I, I think you can. Okay. But I, like, it's hard. I don't know if we can access the UK psychic yeah. i mean I she, know, no, she does have some U- united states and People. canada clients from there so there must okay. be a way to do that um but she said we could reach her through her facebook page so i had put all that information on the episode so by the time this one's out it's the the episode before this okay. which came out on friday which is today but um i did send her a couple i, I sent her a name and i mentioned this to you when you got your nails done this week yeah and you're like oh we should talk about this really quick yes so either she's really good or again she's done some research i don't know but i wanted to tell you what she said all i sent her was the name kyron horman so she she always sends me very short sentences but like through different emails. So I'm going to have to look through these. And so let me see where I started here. So like when they hit her, she sends them. Is that what you mean? Maybe. Okay. And she sends them individually. So I only get like sentences here and there. Okay. And she said, it's someone close to the family, the family or friend or family, a friend of the family. Um, And she just said, it was nice talking to you. So she is very quick and short. This She says, it's a mother figure, mum. Or stepmom, she doesn't like her energy. Somebody else is involved also. That's what she's picking up. That was another message. This is an interesting one. She says, think the boy's stepmom as I got a mother figure, but not a biological mother. So that's why I feel stepmom, mom. The stepmom is a complete psycho, but also a woman who works outside like gardening and a male that was involved with the women knew this. And the three of them know each other. And the gardening woman knew the place to bury the body. Okay, there's another really interesting one that she sends that I was like, which which you told me this earlier, and I kind of freaked out because that's all stuff that is on the internet that there's rumors that or rumors speculation that Terry Horman's best friend, Dee Dee Spicer, who worked for a landscape company was involved. And she's been hush hush. And um, the lawyers have been protecting her. And there was yes. always question about some guy that helped them. So this is, this is not like, this is not new speculation for us to hear. So we're yes. like, okay, either she's, really she's validating good. it. Or yeah. she's just read, So it's hard to say. Yeah. She, this is the other one that kind of got me. She says T and D. So she Which gets initials. Terry and D and D. Yeah. Two people. Other than I think the sun knows or another guy at, at random, not getting much. It's an M or a J for the male. Well, her son's name is James Moulton. Right. So that's a question. What the, the son wasn't living with them. Was he at the time? Um, I know he wasn't living with her full time. I just don't no, know. I think so. I think that could have been part of the problem of um, why this happened, because I think he was sent off. Right. To go live, I think, with her parents. Um, and I think he was like 16 or so yeah. at that time. I'm trying to yes. remember. Um, but could he have known but something? What did she, yeah, what did what does that say again? Something about the son knowing? It just said T and D are the two people, and I think the son knows. And she's in and a guy at random, she says, not getting much, just an M or J for the male. Huh. So then I said, okay, well, that, 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 all that stuff, if you knew the case, you could really kind of dial some of that down. So I had you do, um, send her one more, which I thought was pretty, pretty amazing as well. Um, which was what? I don't even remember now. Alyssa. Okay. Yeah. Oh my and God. Then, but then, okay. So we did talk about this stuff. So, so we did talk about Alyssa McCran yes. and I, then I sent, I found a really good article on Reddit. And I sent it to Jeanette Lucas. And I'm like, listen, you said who, what, when, where this article has all of that. Where do we look for her? Okay. Okay. Because she says basically the same thing Jeanette was saying. Okay. Gosh, I got to find that. Who's the Reddit? Who's the Reddit about Alyssa? Yes. About Alyssa. Okay. Okay. 
hold on. I got to find that one because. Well, I have the one you sent me from Melissa. Okay. Yeah. This then you read it. Magenta. It says, yes, I get cold. I get winter time, which is true. It was winter time. I get walking, walking up hills. Also I get elevation, but up and straight down. So definitely walking late thirties, early forties, either long or short sighted. Okay. So first of all, Alyssa, it was winter time. She was rumored to, um, be out hiking at Multnomah falls. That was where her car was found. And some people on the trail said that they saw her up there and, um, that it was cold that day and that she wasn't, didn't seemingly, wasn't seemingly prepared for the cold. Correct. Yes. And it says water around. Well, yes, there's a lot of water around there. I'm getting falling, but something weird happened Two or met four men took her sexually assaulted. Sorry for the late response. Okay. So she could have been, because we were always wondering, did she even actually go out yes. there? She had yes. already ran that morning. She had gone shopping by Washington square. Supposedly yes. her phone pinged out there. Why would she go all the way out to Multnomah Falls to go run in somewhat almost evening time right. and, and not in the clothes that she, what, she wasn't prepared because there was a picture of a listen. She's it's like a Lycra jacket, like a, a thin running one. Yeah. And that it was December. It was like the 19th of December. Yeah. So, okay. Let's just say now she's saying that she was hiking, walking. Okay. What if that rut was her, maybe it was in the parking lot. Right. Before she even got to her car, because then you go to Jeanette, who says that she was taken by some men, that she was killed. She was, she's by, she's like underneath a bridge. She keeps saying that under concrete in the water. Yeah. Okay. So then I was thinking, okay, out there, the bridge of the gods, like what? So if they didn't take her very far. So read me, read me what Jeanette said. Cause I, I haven't heard this part. Okay. So that was a long time ago when she said oh. all of that. Oh, okay. I okay. mean, and yeah, because every time I talked to her about it, she mentions like, she's like, it's by water. It's under a bridge. Yes. Like, you know how many bridges we have in yeah. Portland or is it in the gorge? Like, so I just sent her that article. I'm like, look at okay. this. Tell me where to start. Like, just yeah. point me somewhere. I'll right. go look under a couple of bridges. Although I really, really don't want to go downtown Portland. Please don't make me go down I there. I really don't want to find a dead body. Here's the thing though. Okay. So I'm just worried about the homeless, scary people. I I could care about, I would be happy to find her. Oh my God. I don't want to find a bit of body, but I, I mean, it would be like, yeah, it it would be good to find her. I would love to find her. I just don't want to find her dead. Um, Okay. She'll be bones at this point though. It won't be. So random. This is a total like segue of conversation, but I was watching a show that was talking about like the first woman, um, uh, well, I don't know if she's the first woman, but it was about this woman kayaker and she was going to compete in this really big kayak race that she was like the first woman to do it. Well, anyways, they were getting prepared, um, for this big race and she was doing her practice runs and they were interviewing her. And it was like this big celebratory kind of piece. She did a practice run and she got pinned. She fell out of her kayak And basically her body was pinned by the water on a rock. So the waterfall was coming down on her body, pinning her body there. So what I was thinking when I read this about Alyssa, I'm like, okay, water and all this, like literally she could be pinned somewhere in the falls and there's no way for us to know she's there. Yeah. Yeah. And if the water never stops, she's never going to float to the top because the water and by now, I think this was 2011, wasn't it? Yeah. So by now, well, she says she's like under a bridge, but she sees um, steel, like a steel form of like the underneath of a bridge. Well, so there's bridges at Multnomah Falls too. And, yeah. but the bridges are over the falls. Yeah. And, you know, I remember, remember the story of me yeah, trying yeah. to find my cell phone in the falls and it was a little fall. And I tried to like put my back to the fall so I could stop the water a little bit so I yeah. could find my phone. It's like a lot of pressure. And the Maloma falls, first of all, you're never going to get in there. They used a stick. They, the kayaker people, they were like using a stick and they found something kind of soft. And so he kind of went and tried to dislodge her and ultimately was able to dislodge her. But, um, no, I, 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 I can't so wait. So do to you what think Jeanette it says. could be like, actually at the falls, like those bridges, 
Well, that's kind of what I was thinking. I mean, I don't know. I don't have a because clue. Because I was thinking psychic. more like in her. Okay. So if it was something up there at the, actually while she was hiking and never Correct. made it all the way to the parking lot at all. Right. Because aren't there multiple bridges? It's not just the one bridge across the falls. Like there's multiple little bridges. I don't know. I, don't I know guess we have, have to figure out what them. they're made out of because. Yeah. And what's this look like in Jeanette's mind? All right. Well, good luck to you today. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Hi, I'm-